Amen. Say Jesus. Jesus. Hello, everybody. How y'all doing today? Yeah. Amen. We want to welcome all the visitors. My name is Miles. I'm the pastor of the Rock, and uh, welcome to church today. And we want to say hello to everybody watching online, all our campuses, East County, North County, San Isidro, people in Coronado, and everybody in our micro sites. Let's give them a big hand out there. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. Uh, yesterday we opened up two new thrift stores, uh, one here right on Rosecrans and one in the Fletcher Parkway in East County. So we want to encourage you to go and go do some shopping and bring your stuff down there. It's a great uh, a partnership. It's not only a great place to buy stuff, but it's also a partnership we have with the police and fire department. We give them vouchers um, to give to people in, in need in the community that come back to our stores and redeem them for stuff they need. If house burns down, we can help supply the families with stuff. So this thrift store is a great resource to the community. Last year, we gave away $166,000 worth of stuff to the community for through those voucher programs. <laughs> Amen. So uh, please bring your stuff to our, our thrift stores. Uh, let's all get on our knees and pray. Whoever Joan is, you got your name shouted out on the, on the TV or whatever. So uh, 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 two things. Next week we're going to have a special gift for you uh, to give all of you families. And a special presenter, uh, Robert Morris from Gateway Church, will be joining us next week. Um, this Tuesday, the uh, Supreme Court is going to hear the case of whether marriage should be defined between a man and woman or just two people. And so they have the opportunity, they're going to take the opportunity to decide whether on a federal level uh, marriage is any two people or just what the Bible says between a man and a woman. Uh, obviously that has great implications on the church and the Christian community. You, you see it every day in the news, uh, the conflict between what the Bible says and what culture says. But this week they're going to start hearing that case. And, and in June, I guess, I think in June that we'll hear uh, the decision uh, so we need to pray for that. We need to pray that God, on, they honor God. Um, our country is blessed because in the beginning when we set it up, it was blessed on a, a belief in God. It's on our money. It's all over Washington, D.C., on the, on the buildings that we uh, trust in God. Our country has drifted away from God. Uh, and, and because of that, God will remove his blessing. We should not take for granted that we are blessed because we're better than any other country or we're smarter than any other country. God has blessed us, and he can very easily remove that blessing. Uh, and as believers, we have to decide whether we're going to stand on the Word of God or be politically correct. Uh, and I encourage you to be stand on the Word of God 24-7 uh, because that's the only thing that's going to stand. <laughs> Amen. So we're just going to pray for that. We're going to pray that they honor God and pray that, they, that what they do and the, that the laws of our land, there are, there, it is possible to have laws that are contradictory to the Word of God. Uh, and hopefully you realize that and that we are obligated to obey our Heavenly Father before any law of the land. And then so be it after that. We'll see what happens. So, but hopefully it doesn't come down to that and we'll just keep uh, doing what we do. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for your faithfulness. Thank you so much for your goodness to us. Uh, and Lord, we pray that we would bless you. We always want you to bless us. But we want to bless you. We want to obey you. And I pray you encourage us to do that. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, if you are new, we lift our Bibles up and say words. So if you have your Bible or your Bible on your phone or whatever you use, uh, on the count of three, say word. One, two, three, say word. word. Let's turn to Psalm 103. Psalm 103, and the Psalm is right in the middle of the Bible. Psalm 103. Psalm 117 is the shortest book in the Bible. Psalm 118 is the middle book of the Bible, and Psalm 119 is the longest book of the Bible. What a coincidence. And if you get confused between where Psalms is and Proverbs, Psalms is before Proverbs, because Psalms has an A and Proverbs has an O. That's how you can remember it. Amen. I have an app called Miles a Minute. How many of you do not have that app, Miles a Minute? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. You can go to the App Store, Miles a Minute. It's all one word, M-I-L-E-S-A-M-I-N-U-T-E. And you get a one-minute 
video devotional from me every single day. 365 videos I made. Actually, I made about 9,000, but only 365 made it to cut. And every day you get a video, they have devotionals, they have prayers, they have a, a, a chance to get saved. As a matter of fact, last year over a thousand people got saved watching these videos. And we want you to share it with your friends. Uh, and I make them all over wherever I travel. Um, and I want to show one to you today about the power of words. So just check this out. Did you know that your words can actually change the shape and makeup of a water molecule? I want you to watch this picture because I'm going to say some words and show you what these words do to water. When you say love, water looks like this. When you say gratitude, water looks like this. When you say thank you, water looks like this. But when you say you disgust me, water looks like this. When you say fool, water looks like this. When you say evil, water looks like this. So here's my question to you. If your body is two thirds water, which it is, would you rather your body to look and feel like these pictures? Or would you rather your body to look and feel like these pictures? You know, the Bible says that we should not speak anything except that which edifies, that's positive. Your words have so much impact on the people you speak to and to yourself. So here's my encouragement to you. Speak life into someone today. Say thank you. Say you're wonderful. Say you're beautiful. Say I love you. And speak life and health into people because your words actually do make a difference. Amen. So, I love you. Look to the person next to you and say this. Get your hand, and you need your hands for this. I want you to look to the person next to you and say, you are absolutely marvelous. <laughs> I want to, I want to encourage all of you when you leave in all the campuses to tell the people, the ushers, the parking lot attendants, the greeters, Thank them for what they do. Amen? Use your words. Children's ministry as well, all the volunteers, all, all the volunteers today. We started a series last week called True Lovers, where we are learning to love people according to their love language. We learned last week that there are five love languages, ways people give and receive love. One is words of affirmation. Another love language are gifts, giving and receiving gifts. Another love language is quiet, t quality time. Another love language are acts of service and physical touch. Some people who, people who have the gift of the, the love language of words of affirmation, they love and express their love primarily by saying nice things to people. And consequently, they are feel, felt loved most when people say nice things to them. People who have the, the, the love language of giving gifts express their love primarily through giving gifts and they receive it by receiving gifts and on and on and on. Today I want to talk about words of affirmation. Everyone say words of affirmation. It is very important for us to understand that some people are most loved when you say nice things to them. That's their love language. That's how they were designed. And they in turn express love by saying nice things to other people. And it's possible that you could be expressing your love language to somebody and yet not filling the emotional tank of the person you're loving because their love language is words of affirmation and yours is giving gifts. It's very important for us as a true lover to love people according to their love language, not our own. I, I was speaking at a marriage conference, a marriage retreat, and we have our marriage retreat coming up. Um, and I'll be speaking there too. And the, one of the, fir the first thing I always do at our marriage retreats, every time, first thing I get up on the stage is ask everybody to look to their spouse and say, I love you and give them a kiss. And all you hear is, uh, <laughs> you know, and I got to run over and kiss my wife and then come back up five minutes later after I get my, my kiss on and then do it again. <laughs> Tell your wife. Uh, and then uh, all, uh, always someone will come to me sometime and say, crying, I haven't heard that in years. He hasn't said that to me in years. 
It's very important for us to love people. Not only you should say that no matter what your love language is, but to love people according to their love language. And one of them is words of affirmation. However, there is a correlation between how you love people and how you love God. Our relationship with people is in a way practice for how we have a relationship with God. Because God is very much a person. As a matter of fact, our personhood, our personality, our ability to love, have a relationship comes from God. When God, when the Bible says God made us in his image, that's what he's talking about. Not with hands and feet, but the ability to have relationship. And so how we love each other is practice and a sign of how we're going to love God. Let me read a verse to you. You don't have to, you don't have to turn there. Uh, 1 John chapter 40, verse 20. Chapter 4, verse 20 says, if anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he's a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother who he can see, how does he love God whom he cannot see? If you're saying, I hate you, I hate you, I hate you, and you can see that person, how are you going to love God? The way you love people is going to be the same way you love God. And if you're, if you're expecting things from people to make you feel good, you're going to be expecting things from God because that's how you love a true lover loves according to the love language of the person being loved. And that applies to all of us, that you have people in your life. You need to know how they feel love and love them that way, not according to what you want. Because if you're a person who loves according to what you want, you're going to worship God the same way. And by the way, I'm going to use love and worship synonymously. That means the same as synonymous. That means I'm going to love God and worship God. It means the same thing. You're going to worship God according to what you want if that's how you love people. But if you say, no, I'm going to love people according to the way they are wired, I'm going to love God according to the way he is wired. So today we're going to talk about how do you love God with words of affirmation? How do you affirm God with your words? And before I get to that, let me say this. Some of you worship the way you want, which is like this. That Because that's how you feel comfortable. And God is saying, I don't like that. Because that's not what I want. I want more than that. I want your words. The Bible says lift holy hands. The Bible says shout. The Bible says dance. And we're like this. And you know what God said? That's not good enough for me. Because I deserve better. So we're going to look at Psalm. In the book of Psalms, Psalms is, is, is part of the Bible that has, that's written in poetic language. There's different kind of languages or genres in the Bible. And poetic language is what I call soul food. It feeds our soul and instructs us on how to communicate to God. There's a certain way to communicate to God. One time one of my kids, I think it was my son, said something to me he shouldn't have said because he was upset. And I said, hold up, back up. I understand you're upset, but there's a certain way to address your father and there's a certain way not to address your father. You know there's certain ways you can address to God and there's certain ways you should not address God? That you are not equal with God? And so Psalms, one of the, one of the purposes of Psalms is to give us, to so, give us the songs to sing to God, but it's teaching us how to talk to God. It teaches us what to say about God, how to thank God how to honor God, how to praise God, how to complain to God. They're imprecatory psalms that tell us how to complain to God. God, this is not fair. Okay, come on, keep talking. I don't understand why you're doing this. Keep talking. I don't understand the timing. Keep talking. And then at the end, but I praise you anyway. Now we're good. Now we're good. Okay, just get it. This is God talking now. You can, you can tell me your heart, but just understand my ways are not your ways. So I understand you not understanding, but just understand my ways are above your ways. I know stuff you don't know. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my thoughts above your thoughts. So I get the fact that you don't understand, but just understand it's right. So tell me you don't like it, but then tell me you honor me. Then we're good. But don't come here with an attitude. And then leave it at that. Now, I, I'm telling you in my tone, but this is just the psalm. The psalm will tell you. So it's all kind of psalms. So today we're going to look at how to bless God with our words. To bless means to thank God and acknowledge him as the originator of all blessing. To bless God means to, is identical, virtually identical to saying thank you and I'm grateful and recognize you as the giver of all blessing. So when we bless God, we are saying with our words, thank you. When's the last time you told God, thank you? Not in your head. It's a difference. Difference. All you ladies in the house. You, it's a di big difference when your man says, 
I love you. And when he thinks it. Because you're all like, um, 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 I love you. And then he goes. Oh, he's thinking it, but he didn't say it. Oh, there's a big difference. Can I get amen? Ladies in the house say, hey. You want some emotion to that, brother. You want, you want facial expression, body expression. You want that, that, that diamond. You want something. Tell me. Show me. So three things. Three things. Number one of you knows. True lovers worship God by verbally affirming his holy character. Psalm 103.1. Bless the Lord. Bless means to thank. Praise. Honor. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is with me. Bless his holy name. When is the last time you said, God, I acknowledge you as holy? I acknowledge you as perfect. I tell the world your thoughts are pure. Your decisions are right. Your plans are perfect. You are always on time. I tell you that with my voice. I'm not thinking it. I'm saying it. I'm singing it. I'm proclaiming it. I'm not, ex- I don't, and I don't even have to explain it because that's unexplainable. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say it. We're going to practice right now. Okay. Get up and put your booty back in your seat, which means to sit up straight. Get your booty back in your seat. Come on now. Yeah, he said booty in church. That's right. Right here. Put it back. And for 10 seconds, 10 seconds, we're just going to, you're going to say, I bless you because, and you're going to say something about God's character, his, his holiness. He's one of a kind. He's perfect. He's pure. He's right. He's righteous. He's always faithful. Out loud. Are you ready? Say amen if you're ready. I bless you, God, because I bless you, God, because, and you just fill in the blank, and let's go for 10 seconds. One, I'm not going to shout over you, so you're not going to hear me because my microphone's on. One, two, three, say it to God. I'm going to tell you what God is saying right now. He says, Miles, some of them aren't saying anything. In all the campuses, they're sitting there. They think it's a show. They're not participating. They're too cool. They don't know me. That's why they have nothing to say. They can't worship me because they don't know me. They're just going to church. Or you don't feel like it. If you're not going to do it here, at the prompting, you're not going to do it out there. So we're going to try it one more time. Amen. <laughs> What's the big deal? This is the essence of our being. When you go to heaven, you ain't going to be thinking it if you go. You ain't going to be sitting there going, I hear them worshiping God. Uh Uh-uh. That's not what it's about. So I'm going to try it one more time, and I want you to to tell God. And you may be thinking, I don't know what to say. That is the whole point. How do you worship God? If you can't affirm him with your words and praise him and bless him with your words, which is what the Bible tells us to do. It's worshiping him your way. God says, I don't want you to worship your way. I want you to worship my way. I'm God. I'm not saying this about me for all y'all who missed the transition. (laughs) I'm never coming back. He thinks he's God. No, I don't. (laughs) But as you would say, God, I am going to worship you with my mouth. And my mouth, my tongue belongs to you. There's life and death in the tongue, Proverbs says. Jesus says, my words are spirit and life. When Jesus was baptized, what did the Father say from heaven? This is my son with whom I am well pleased. I want all y'all to know. That's what he said. He was affirming his son. 
So I'm going to try it one more time. And by the way, you can stand, you can shout, but I want you to tell God, bless God for his holy character. One, two, three. Let's tell God how great he is. I know we need practice. We need practice. We need practice. We need practice. Let me encourage you. For all y'all who are still sitting there looking at me like a mummy. Some of y'all are saying, I I'm not a verbal person. This is not about you. It's about God. The whole point of a true lover is to love God or the person according to their need, not us. Coming out of Jesus didn't die because he was a sinner and needed to, be, to pay for sin. He died because we needed it. That's love. That's love. Number two. I have my time is number two. We, true lovers verbally affirm his mighty deeds. Psalm 103, uh, 2. Bless the Lord. Thank the Lord. Shout unto the Lord, O oh my soul, for all his benefits. Do you know what God has done for you? Do you realize that the only reason you are alive is because of God? The only reason you have a job is because of God. The only reason you have money is because of God. The only reason you have friends is because of God. The only reason you have anything is because of God. And this church has a God. How often, how often do you tell him that? Some of y'all drove home Friday night drunk and God got you home. You have no idea how you got from the bar to your house and you never thank God. And God was getting you home and you went into bed and God's like, do you, are you at least going to tell me thank you? And you went to sleep, threw up in your bed. <laughs> and your codependent girlfriend cleaned you up. Should have left you a long time ago. And you didn't thank God for that, for your health. And you say, say, all, 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 this is, all this is because of my wisdom and my greatness. All my wealth is because of my wisdom. You are 100% deceived. And if you doubt that, go home and tell God, this is mine and you can't take it. And then step back and watch what happens. <laughs> Tell God it's all you and you can't take it. And by you being silent, that's what you're saying. And I'm not saying, I'm not even being, talking about being silent just now. Throughout your life, you walk around, people saying, great job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no. Shut your mouth. It's all him. <laughs> even, 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 even some, even some Heathen athletes, and I say athletes because we see it on TV all the time, will do this. And the reason I say some because some of them are not heathen, but some of them are heathen because I know them. And they'll do this. What they're saying, it's all about you. At least they, even they know how to do that. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! So, so, here's what we're going to do. I want, you, I want you to think about this. We're going to say it again. Bless, Lord, I bless you because. And I want you to list things he has done for you, which is everything. Everything. Your life, your breath. There's people over here who can't hear. They're deaf. They come to church and they get, they, they get the service through sign language. Amen. But they can see. They can think. They can praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank God for what they can do. Amen. So, in all the campuses, in all the campuses, in all the campuses, I want you to shout and I want you to tell God thank you for what he's done in your life. And I want you to think. And, 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 and now I'm going to put it on you. If you sit there like this, I want you to ask yourself why. I don't have anything to say, or, or whatever your reason is. Or you may be saying, I'm not, I'm not a vocal person. God gave you a voice to be a vocal person. You may not be as vocal as the person next to you, but show sure enough, God is saying, bless me. And show sure enough, you're saying, well, God, I don't bless out loud. No, God said, bless me. Bless me. No, God, I don't bless you. Now you got a problem. And I'm not talking about only here all week long. And you tell God, God, thank you, God, thank you, God, thank you. First thing, no, nah, God, I'm not thanking you because I, that's just not my personality. God says, I made your personality. So you better thank me loud, soft, something. You better shout something. One, two, three. Shout to God and tell him thank you. 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 Thank him. 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 Praise him. 
honor him, exalt him, lift him up, make him proud, make him proud, make him proud. Give him a hand. Amen. Let me drive that point one, one let me drive that point home one more time. There's some, there are going to be many things good, great, amazing, unexplainable that are going to happen to you this week. And I want you, I'm going to pray that when that happens, like when you have the ability to get up and walk out of this building, there are people who can't walk. When someone directs you out of this parking lot, when your car starts, when the person you're with gets up and walks, when all these things happen to you that God is doing in your life, and I want God to remind you, that was me. You're going to tell me thank you? That was me. You're going to tell me thank you? That was me. You're going to tell me thank you? That was me. You're going to tell me thank you? And then God's, then something's going to happen to you in your life that you don't like. And God's going to say, I'm going to use that in your life. You want to thank me in advance for how I'm going to turn that into something good? And when you don't, when you don't, this is all about me. I want you to think about your life and what you are saying to God. Because a true lover, a true worshiper is, is affirming God for everything. And you go home and look at your house. You look at your bank account. You look at your TV. You look at all the stuff you have. And you thank God. You either thank God or you tell him it ain't about him, it's about you. But there is no in-between. A true worshiper says it's all about God. Because that's what the Bible says. That the heavens declare the glory of God. The heavens. And all that is in it creates, declares the glory of God. That includes me and you. Because we are the only ones he gave a voice to actually say it. Gave his word to. And yet we muzzle ourselves. Why? Because we are prideful. Number three. Then my last one. True lovers verbally affirm his forgiving heart. God could kill you now and be completely justified. Well, I deserve this. No, you don't. The Bible says that all have sinned and the penalty of sin is death. What we deserve is death. And when you hear people in our culture saying, I have a right, I have a right, no, we don't. I do not deserve to be the pastor of this church. I don't. I, I'm not as good as you think. I'm a sinner. By the grace of God, I'm here. Period. Hallelujah. By the grace of God. Hey, thank, by the grace of God. Let's read. Psalm 103, verse 10. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. Psalm 103, verse 10. Nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness towards us who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgressors from us. He remembers our sin no more. What does that mean? That you and I deserve more punishment and judgment than we receive. Because the penalty of sin is death. We should be dead in hell, separated from God because he's holy. His character is holy. Remember that? God, thank you. Thank you I get to stand here today. Thank you you have not punished me according to my sins. Thank you, you have forgiven me. Thank you, you are renewing my mind and, and help me obey you more and more every day. Thank you for your patience in my life. Thank you for blessing me way more than I deserve. Thank you. Can you say that to God? Or are you, and please take this very personally, are you so about you that, no, nah, I, I, I don't need to thank you for all that. I deserve this. Are you so blind that you will come to church whenever Give whatever. Let other people serve you. Is it so much about you that you are not realizing how much God has offered you? To say, God, what can I do for you? Because that's what the Bible says to do. That's what we're supposed to do. The devil says do it your way. 
You got to choose. You're going to do it God's way or your way. True lover, a true worshiper says, Lord, I'm going to honor you. And all week long that you will be telling God, thank you, God. Thank you. Lord, I just said something I shouldn't have said. Thank you for not striking me dead. Well, could he have done that? Yeah, because the penalty of sin is death. One sin. Thank you for giving me an opportunity to repent and change. Thank you. So one more time. Let's tell God thank you for your sin. And you know, I'm not asking you to shout out your sin. You can if you want. Or you can just say, Lord, I bless you for not smoking me. <laughs> and I don't mean this smoke. I mean dead smoke. I thank you for not punishing me. I thank you for being patient. I thank you for your mercy in my life. Because if you don't realize how much mercy God has had in your life, you really aren't worshiping God. You're just singing something. And God's like, they don't even know me. They don't even know what I've done for them. They're so blind. Ten seconds. We bless you, Lord, for how much you have forgiven us. Can we give that to God? One, two, three. Lord, say it. 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 Bless them. Bless them. Bless them. Bless them. Bless them. East County, North County, San Isidro, bless God. Everybody stand, everybody stand, all campuses. Bless the Lord, shout to God. Tell him thank you, tell him thank you, tell him thank you. Tell him thank you, tell him thank you, tell him thank you. In all the campuses, I'm going to stay, I'm gonna ask you to sit down and bow your heads and close your eyes. And I want you to listen very carefully. Just take a seat, bow your heads, and you don't have to close your eyes before you sit. You may miss the seat. <laughs> Some people are very literal. <laughs> okay, I got my eyes closed. <laughs> Lord, with my words, I bless you and honor you. Amplified on speaker, on the internet, we bless you, we thank you. You have blessed us with every good gift. And there are people right now sitting in one of our campuses, Lord. They want to tell you they love you by giving their heart to you. They want to acknowledge that you are the forgiver of sin. You cleanse our hearts. You give us salvation. And as you listen to my voice, if you're sitting in any seat, wherever you are, in any, any of our campuses, online, in uh, Coronado, on one of our microsites, wherever you are, and you realize that God loves you, you realize that he's done so much more for you than you could ever imagine. You don't have a time in the day to tell him every good thing, but you should certainly try. But right now you want to ask him to forgive you of your sin. You realize he sent his son Jesus to die for you. And he wants you to say to him, God, thank you for making salvation available to me. He wants you to say to him, God, please forgive me. He wants you to say to him, God, I surrender my heart. He wants to say to you, to him, God, I surrender my life. And I receive salvation. So if that's you, pray this prayer with me. Pray, dear God, please forgive me of my sin. I acknowledge that Jesus died for my sin and that he rose from the dead. Please forgive me of my sin. I surrender my life. I receive salvation. I receive forgiveness the forgiveness of a holy God. Thank you, God. Thank you. If you pray that prayer in a minute, I'm going to ask you to stand up in whatever campus you're in. And by standing, you are blessing the Lord. You are thanking him with your whole soul, your whole being. And in every campus, there's going to be someone there to pray with you so you don't have to worry about What's going to happen next? There's going to be people there who are going to pray with you. So I'm, when I ask you to stand, I want you to stand. You've had decades to think about this decision. 
You don't need it two more minutes. So if you prayed that prayer, in the count of three, I want you to stand up. And I want you to acknowledge that you've asked God to forgive you of your sin. One, two, three, just stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. God bless you. Eyes closed, heads bowed. God bless you. We see you. God bless you. Stand to your feet. Anybody else stand to your feet? God bless you. Very good. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Very good. God bless you. Very good. Stay standing. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Anybody else stand to your feet? God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Now in a minute, I'm going to ask all y'all who are standing to come down to the altar. If you're in the balcony, all you have to do is turn around and walk up and the ushers will bring you down. And the rest of us, we want to cheer and encourage them. So if you're standing, come out of your seat, come on down to the altar, and let's give them a hand to come on down. Amen. Come on. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hey, stay right here. Stay right here. Stay right here. Stay right here. Just stay right here. Is that your brother, your sister? Just face me. God bless you. 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 Amen. 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 If I can encourage any, all of y'all in one thing this week is to thank God with your words. All week long, talk to him. Affirm and tell God, I know you're with me. I know you love me. I believe you have a plan for my life. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Tell God every thought, every concern, every worry. God bless you. God bless you. Every thought, every worry, every concern that you have. Amen. 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 Come on down. Anybody else? Come on down. God bless you. 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 Amen. Come on. Come on. God bless you, God bless you. Um, I want to encourage y'all, y'all use your words. When you leave here, there's a bunch of people who've been here since before the sun came up. They don't owe that to you. Be nice to them. Some of y'all curse them out. You drop F-bombs out here. Now, you may be a visitor and all that kind of stuff, but you know what? Let's be nice to them. That's just basic. But go thank them. Go bless them. Go encourage them. The ushers, the people taking care of your kids. This is some of y'all, this is the only time you get away from your kids. We've had people drop kids off and go shopping. I'm not joking. I'm not trying to be funny. That's true. It's sad. And they stay away for hours like it's a babysitting service. Go thank them. Go bless them. And for some of y'all who aren't doing anything, you need to get up and do something. You need to go do, do, serve and take care of somebody else's kids. But for real, let's thank, let's give God, credit to where God has given us all of this. He's given us all of this. And, and the world would love to take it away. And we will have it for every second as long as God determines we're going to have it. But the world's going to try to take it away. 
Let's thank God. Go home and thank God for everything you have. Go around your house. Thank you for that couch. Thank you for that jacked up chair. Thank you for that TV that don't work. Thank you for that, thank you for that spoiled milk that I should have drank. That, thank you for that spoiled milk that I should have drank and I wasted it because I took it for granted. Because I didn't realize how blessed I was with all the millions of people who die every day. They would die for that milk. Thank you, God, and sorry that I did that. For real. For real. Reality. Go to Tijuana. Go to the dump in Tijuana where kids live in the dump. And realize how blessed you are. God bless Tijuana. I'm not trying to say anything against Tijuana, but there are people living there in conditions that you don't live in. And not no fault of their own. And in this country as well. Let's not say, I got mine. I got mine. So I'm good. Uh, uh, uh. God bless you so you could be a blessing. Amen. God bless you. We, we, every, 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 every week we take an offering and some of y'all don't do anything. We got bills. We got bills. We got problems with bills. We got problems with, with giving right now. It's low. We got repercussions because of that right now. Right now. Because giving is low and we can't do stuff we want to do right now. Why? Ah, it's mine. <laughs> Ooh, it's not. Lord, I pray you bless these people. We got to get all these people out of here. <laughs> I got to do this two more times. <laughs> We pray you bless these people standing here at the altar. We pray you bless them and honor them. And we pray you change their life. And I pray, Lord, we could be a blessing to you this week. And we can bless each other in Jesus' name. Amen. Before y'all leave, here's the thing. Right now, if your visit is not over, we're going to cheer these people into that room. After they, oh, oh, oh. And after they get in that room, Pastor George is going to come out here, pray for us, then we leave. So right now, let's give them a hand as they go this way. Let's give them a hand. Hey! God spoke to you during that sermon and you feel like you want to ask Christ to be your Savior, it's as simple as A, B, C. One, admit and accept that you are a sinner. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and he died for your sin and rose from the dead. And then confess yourself as a sinner and say, Jesus, please forgive me of my sin. So if you would like to ask Jesus Christ to be your Savior, I just want you to just look at me right now and pray this prayer with me in the privacy of your heart, knowing that God knows you and loves you very much. Say, dear God, I believe that I'm a sinner. I know the penalty of my sin is death, and I don't want to die and go to hell. But I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he died and rose from the dead for my sin. And I confess myself a sinner and ask him to forgive me of my sin. Jesus, please forgive me of my sin and fill me with the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, you just ask Christ to be your Savior, we want to know, and we want to email you some resources. So if you just prayed that prayer with me to accept Jesus as your Savior, click on the link that just appeared, and we want to send you some free resources. God bless you, and we'll see you in heaven.